Rabbis told parables. It's not hard to see how perfectly the vocation of a rabbinic teacher suited Jesus. Like other rabbis, Jesus walked the land, taught in parables, engaged in debates, interpreted scriptures, and raised up disciples. His teachings, too, fit well within rabbinic styles. Take the parables. You may be surprised to learn that Jesus was not the only rabbi who told parables. Most rabbis used traditional motifs, themes that shed light on the parables Jesus told. For instance, parables often included a character who represented God, a king, a shepherd, or a farmer with a vineyard. The rabbis drew these images of God directly from scripture. Consider what one rabbi said. When a sheep strays from the pasture, who seeks whom? Does the sheep seek the shepherd or the shepherd seek the sheep? Obviously, the shepherd seeks the sheep. In the same way, the Holy One, blessed be he, looks for the lost. Doesn't this rabbi's words remind you just a little of Jesus' parable about the shepherd leaving the 99 sheep to rescue the one lost sheep? Matthew 18, 12 through 13. Like Jesus, this rabbi was saying that God is the one who pursues us when we stray. Both Jesus and the rabbi were basing their parables on scriptures. Once we identify the traditional forms of of rabbinic parables, we can better understand what Jesus was saying. Consider the following rabbinic parable. There are four types among those who sit in the presence of the rabbis, the sponge, the funnel, the strainer, and the sieve. The sponge, which soaks up everything. The funnel, which takes in at the end and lets out at the other. The strainer, which lets out the wine and retains the dregs. The sieve, which removes the che- which removes the chaff and retains the fine flour. This is what's called a four types parable, where four kinds of people are compared in their way of living. It reminds us it reminds us of Jesus's parable in Luke 8, 4 through 11, about the seed that fell in four places, the rock, the path, the thorns, and the good soil. Each parable focuses on how various people respond to God's word. In the above parable, the rabbi is saying, contrary to our preconceptions, that the best disciple is not the sponge, who retains absolutely everything, but the sieve, who sifts through the teaching to retain what is best. What great advice for Christians. It reminds us that we are not called to be parrots, unquestionably repeating whatever we learn from our favorite teacher. Instead, we are to exercise wisdom and discernment, continually asking questions, weighing answers, seeking understanding, and grounding our beliefs within the context of God's word and the wisdom of Christian tradition. A Rabbi as Redeemer By comparing Jesus to other rabbis of his time, we do not mean to imply that he is just another rabbi. Nor are we merely singling him out as a rabbi among rabbis, much as you might distinguish an Olympic gold medalist from other athletes. Jesus was an extraordinary rabbi, but he was so much more than that. Remember that the Jewish people longed for a Messiah, a deliverer, who would be like Moses. Many of Jesus' contemporaries were looking for a new Moses to deliver them from the Roman oppressors. Did you know that Moses is rever- is revered not only as Israel's greatest deliverer but as Israel's greatest but as Israel's great teacher? In fact, he is often called Moshe Rabenu, Moses our rabbi, by the Jewish people who honor him for bringing them the Torah after his encounter with God on Mount Sinai. Like Moses, Jesus brought God's word to earth. More than that, he was God's word incarnate. With this in mind, it is hardly surprising that he spent his life as a Jewish rabbi. In both life and death, he is our great teacher, redeeming us so that we can learn from him how to live. Imagine for a moment that you possess the sheep.